Come on in, everybody. Come on in. Look at this. Distraction Central here. Renanthera Citrina. Lovely jubbly. No fragrance, but very beautiful. So welcome. Come on in. Let's have a look at Blooming Alley. Let's enjoy some of the fruits of our labors here. Wildcat still going strong. Beautiful. Golden Peacock. Personal favorite. Always in bloom. Sort of. But never, never far off being always in bloom. And down here I have my Tabasco text. Thank you, Micah McCarthy, for doing the homework for me. Tabasco text. Second bloom, now open. We have a few more buds to come. And then here is Smiley Face. We got two blooms on the corner of Serby. Lady Chatterley, variety Chatterley Day. So that is looking gorgeous. Third bud is on the way. Then let's pan up. And look at Mr. Dendrobium, Victoria Regina, or Mrs. or Her Royal Highness, or whatever, still blooming. It's, it's just a sight, a sight to behold. And we are now in early July, and she's still in bloom. So let's pan down. Let's go across here. This is my shelf on the right. And then let's have a look at my little Tolumnia, Gyrac Rainbow, Red Sun. Still looking cute and beautiful. And I just wanted to point out, look at the foliage on this one. And just look how deep in the shade this little Tolumnia is. And it's not quite yet the segue that I wanted, but we are on Tolumnias today. We have work to do, but I thought I would just show off a little bit of the Blooming Alley before going and doing some work. Here is my Polyanthem hanging out, smelling like licorice. Very, very pretty, dainty blooms, quite frilly in the lip. Cute. And then, Dendrobium hibiki is coming to life with its first cluster. There's about six now that I can count, maybe seven, but six I can see. So that is going to be awesome for the next five to six months. And we have one Siamese Kiwi doll bloom. That is awesome. At least one. Same as last year. It could have been four. But yeah, you know, I couldn't keep an eye on the buds coming out. I guess something chomped on them. And then here, oh my goodness. Good morning, good morning, gorgeousness. This one opened this morning. This is Lelia purpurata vecroseriae estriata. Just opened this morning when I went around to my top guns and I'm like, aha, aha, you are coming with me. So now located in the blooming alley, as well as its compadre, Lelia purpurata vecroseriae. Beautiful. And my goodness, we still have Epidendrum Parkinsonianum. Incredible. Incredible the longevity of these blooms. Gosh. And then here, that gorgeous cross, multiforme, crossed with Capricorn Nu, which is extremely difficult to film on camera. I never see if it's in focus or not. But this is just a bunch of grapes, but blooms. So this is my distraction. My Zalemnia now has said Ade, 
we have one more left, but that's now almost gone. There is a branch coming though. I hope it makes it. Not entirely sure if it will. Oh my goodness, and I just see another branch right there. Yeah, so these are the distractions I'm up against. Very happy to have them. <laughs> but I need to get through this little bunch of forest tree here. I need to get through to get all my tulumnias down because I have to do some maintenance on them. They're, they're tucked away back there. All I do is spray them down two, three times a day. And now we need to remove some old spikes and just have a general checkup and see how they're doing. So yeah, stop with the distractions. Let's get on with it. Alrighty, here they all are. I used to have 19, now I have 4, 7, 10, 13, 4, 7, 10, 13, yeah. And I'm about to possibly lose this one. I, they all have tags on them, but to be honest, I don't think that maybe only two, maybe only two are correctly identified. I bought all of them except for my mocha firm dot. This one. I bought them this one from Schwerter. And it's very, very been very, very difficult to get established. So I'm just gonna start with this one because I've never ever oh, my bad. I've never ever attached the tag. Schwerter and I have a very controversial relationship, or let's just say I have a controversial relationship with Schwerter. And I let that out on my Tolumnia. Firm Mocha Dot, which is not fair because it's not like the orchid has done anything to me. So I'm just going to attach this tag as part of my maintenance task regarding my Tolumnias. One has lost a tag because at the time it didn't bloom as what I thought it was going to be. And then I thought, well, I don't know the ID of this one. So I took the tag off, which was dumb because now I can't even put the bloom to the name just yet. Because now I don't know which bloom it was. But I think that all of mine are pretty much pink brished. Most of them. I have the Gyrac Red Sun that we saw earlier. So I believe that one is correct. Anyway, tag is on. Let's look at this leaf. No, it's okay. Here's another one I just want to quickly look at because look, it's growing a little side plant. Which I'm not interested in. This one is supposedly pink beige, but it bloomed like the pink brished. I couldn't see the difference. And this one just comes just to remove the spikes and the weed. And I'm basically just getting a, a once over look-see if there are any bugs. They're not as vigorous as I thought they would be. I've had them now two years and I did kind of expect some major progress, I guess, last year. Didn't really happen. And you saw that where they're located, oh, this weed is not going to come out without pulling my entire lava rock out. So I'm just gonna cut it off. And you saw that they are just in shade. They don't get any direct sun at all. So that's a bit of a, yeah. I believe they should look a little bit healthier than this. In the winter, how do I care for them? Very carefully. Very, very carefully. 
I have seen some salt build up on some of the leaves. You see here? This little one it looks really sad and pathetic. It feels very dehydrated as well. I have two new growths coming, but they don't look the happiest. So yeah, but you can see here the salt buildup on that leaf. Because all my telumnias get the same fertilizer. Everybody gets the same. I don't make up different batches. So if you don't have a strong plant, then it cannot take up the nutrients, clearly. Sorry that I'm blocking the view. But I'm just taking a Q-tip and going in and washing out some of the salt deposits. I have a few like this. So every time I use my clippers, I will do another one while evaporation takes care of sterilization. Here's another one, supposedly, you see, pink brush again. I have lots of pink brush. It doesn't matter. Tolumnia blooms are so cute. It doesn't matter. But let me address once again what I do in winter. I take it very easy and I'm very, very targeted where I spray them and always around the base, through the basket as opposed to on the basket. Now they just get doused. This one is not with the general population because it looks very weak. So I have this one in my dining room area where things are a bit more protected. I still have to do a little tour of that one and show you what I mean. I do want it to grow well. So it's not exposed to the hot elements of the outside, despite being in the shade, it's down on a lower shelf. And I mist it every morning, sometimes two or three times a day. Supposedly this one is direct flyer spray. It's never bloomed for me, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> but I don't want to lose it. Alrighty, next up, I have another little candidate with a spike in it supposedly golden sunset and yes this is a golden sunset i have um, seen these blooms now several times and they're gorgeous they're very very pretty so 300 ppm is my standard it goes throughout however in the summer i only fertilize them early morning and then during the day to keep up a little bit that they don't dry out so fast I just take normal, normal RO water. Sometimes it has, it has seaweed in it. And then I just spray them and spray them and then they get kind of diluted after that. So there shouldn't be mineral deposits on any of my telumnias, but you can see there's like white stuff on the lava rock right here. This one is the one that I took the tag off because it didn't bloom what it said it would, so now I don't know which one it was supposed to be unless I look at my notes. But you see how weak and dehydrated it looks. It's trying to grow a new fan over here. But, um, yeah. They're not doing as well as I, I expected, to be honest. Again, these are from Thai orchids and more. Basically, I... I don't have a complaint about the quality of their plants when I got them. I mean, you get a tolumnia, you get one fan and then good luck, you know. At least that's what I, what I got. Sometimes I see tolumnias and they're all big and bushy and they come out straight out of the box. Well, I got one fan and good luck. So let's go on with the next one. I didn't get bad plants from Thai orchids and more. I didn't. We can always discuss whether not getting a tagged plant correctly from what you ordered 
Does that make it a bad plan? No, that just makes it either I'm jinxed or it's bad luck. But this is supposed to be rainbow soft pink. And it's one of the ones that is doing much better. It's strong. And it's got two new fans coming out the side. Three actually this season. This one is a new one this season. And then two more at the bottom. So this one's doing okay. But look at how these leaves are so pink. And I have them in that bright, bright shade. I find it astonishing. Supposedly this one is Dalmatian. I don't re recall it blooming as a Dalmatian, otherwise I would have remembered. So this one is not a Dalmatian. I've seen other Dalmatians and I'm not talking about the dogs, but online. And these are not them. These blooms were not any resemblance of the Dalmatian. But they were pretty. They were pretty, nonetheless. Alrighty, that's you taken care of. Yeah, every single plant, whether the spike has dried out or not. There's another one here with some salt deposit on the tip of the leaf. So fly a firm white. I'll have to look at my notes if I have any images. I should, I should. If not, I'll be cross with myself. Firm White is doing all right. Got a new fan coming there. These two are new this year. So we'll get rid of that salt on the tip. I don't see any bugs for the time being and I'm really happy about that because sometimes the dehydration can be because there's bugs chomping away at your tolumnia, but there's none here. Now this spike, they say never remove a tolumnia spike because it can branch. It hasn't dried back, I'm just gonna leave it, but it's been out of bloom so long, I doubt very much that it's even going to do anything. What about you? What about you? You are a brown spot. Yes, you are. This one, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous brown spot. Very, very blotchy golden and blotchy dark spots, pretty. And you can come off and that's it for you. Now I saw another one when I was taking them down with a lot of salt on it, which kind of irritates me because I can't see it now. And this one is supposed to be snow white and I believe it bloomed as snow white as well. It's already working on its next growth, right there. And there's another one coming right here. So that's awesome. You can remove the spikes. But where is my other salt deposit, Tolumnia? They all look the same, <laughs> but they're not. They're not. Let's have a look at this one while we wait for the evaporation of the clippers. You're supposed to be pink beige. I wouldn't know. I don't see any bloom spikes on this one. I don't remember pink beige blooming. This one looks all right. When you see here these burnt off tips, that's cold damage. That is me pushing it early this year, taking them off the tray and hanging them up because for approximately three months of the year. I have them on a huge white tray. They go out in the morning and they come back in in the evening. And yeah, you do that for 100 days and nights and then you get lazy on 101. And then you, all the work that you've done during the, the winter months to protect them from the cold, but have them enjoy the warmth even on a winter's day, it's kind of warm enough for them, about 17, 18 degrees outside. And if that, that's where I have them in the sun because it doesn't get that hot, hot sun. It just, it's a gorgeous temperature, which raises your sun temperature up to about 20. So that's, that's fine for them. But then I bring them in because the evening gets cool. And then I was lazy and this is what happens. 
You see these? That's because some nights drop to 13 in March. So I have to be a little bit more diligent than that. This one's coming along really well, except for the brown tips. So let's see, look at this one. It's got a spike coming and it's doing quite nice. This is a strong one and it's golden fire. So judging by the color of the buds that are there, hang on a second. Judging by the color of the buds, it looks like we're gonna have something yellowy. So that might be a correct identification. That'd be great. It's the first time this one actually would bloom. Did I say two years? Look at that date. I was wrong. One year. So maybe they are in the state they're supposed to be in because they're still so young. Okay, well, that's it for me. Oh, here it is. It's the one with the spike. Da, 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 da. Here we go. This one has some salt on the inner side of the leaf. I always take a new Q-tip for every plant. No harm, no foul. Let's just wipe all that salt off. And then ask for forgiveness. But yeah, that's sort of my little Tulumia collection. Bright shade in the summer. And they can take temperatures down to my, 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 my margin, my, my bracket is 15 degrees and I should definitely have thought twice about ruining it, the last leg, the last stretches of the winter. Having said that, to be honest, now I know, but I thought that they would actually, where they live, you saw that, the temperatures would be like two or three degrees warmer because that curtain isn't open, it's there to protect from the wind, etc. And I thought definitely it would be a bit warmer, so if my temperature says 13 where they live, it should be 15. That wasn't the case, and now I know, and it's certainly not going to happen again. So they had their fertilizer this morning. This is the second spray of the day before I put them back. And then, late afternoon, I will probably do it one more time, depending on how much wind I have. If I have a lot of wind, I will do it. If I don't, this may just be enough. Alrighty, let's put them back. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> there's always that one, isn't there? Well, when I was counting earlier, I'm like going 13? Have I lost six Tolumnias in one year? Hmm, that would be a bad record. But here is a straggler that I just found, another pink brisht. And it's very slow to get going. I'm going to remove the salt off of, off of that as well. Yeah, I took him down before taking the others down and totally forgot about him. It's still a bad thing that in a year, I have lost five Tolumnias. And I honestly, you know what's even worse? I don't remember. I remember one, I lost my species one. I had a species one, exactly the same setup, everything, but no, it didn't work. I didn't treat it specially or any different or anything like that. So it didn't make it on, under my, maybe care. I wouldn't even want to use that word, care. It, it wasn't care. So that's quite a lot of Tolumnia's gone. But anyway, supposedly this is pink brisht. So that's the last of them that I just saw when I moved the other ones back. So talking about distractions, I'm in it over my head. I've just stepped up on my little stepladder to appreciate this little 
Neo Phoenicia Rainbow Forest. While I thank you so very much for watching, and I hope to see you in your next videos. If that is the case, in the comments. If you would like to comment, ask any questions you may have. And in general, everybody have a wonderful, wonderful day. Take care. Bye.